Hey everybody, it's John Bender Waffles Aljets, and today we are doing a speed development commentary for the Retro World Map Speed Development that was made using the tile set from William the Unpro Pro. Now, if you haven't checked out this tile set, I highly recommend it. It is fantastic. He also just came out with one that's in the style of like Game Boy graphics. Also highly recommended. I will be doing a speed development with that here in the near future. So let's take a look at things. We'll start off by just designing the basic shape of the continent. Now, in my tutorial where I talked about designing world maps, I noted that one of the most important things that you can do is think about the way that tectonic plates work within your world. And I tried to sort of do something similar with that, that sort of idea here. You've got the, the islands here that definitely look like they were once a part of this larger landmass, and now they are something else entirely. They're, they're separate, um, almost as if things are shifting and moving away. And you could argue that some of these like peninsulas and stuff is, are the beginnings of more things sort of shifting away from one sort of origin point. That was kind of the idea when I was building the continent. Uh, hence why it's sort of, sort of looks like someone took a pile of goo and just stretched out certain bits of it if that makes any sense at all. I hope it does. So let's go through here and let's take a look. This is, uh, I wanted to do something that was smaller, but at the same time still felt like something that you would see in a proper game. That's why it's only really one continent. Normally when I'm designing world maps, I try to do multiple continents just because then it allows for different amounts of gameplay gatekeeping as it were, because obviously you can't go to other continents unless you've progress to a certain level within the game. But I wanted to do something smaller here. Uh, and one thing that, looking at this tile set, I, I felt like the grass, it was a much darker green, which kind of, to me, gave me a very like wetlands kind of feel. And so that's why I had so many rivers and bodies of water and things within this area. I just felt like this world was probably much wetter than uh, your normal world, your normal temperate world. Uh, now when I'm designing maps, I don't know if anybody has noticed, I like to start in the northernmost regions and work my way down. Um, it's just sort of one of those like personal kind of OCD without actually being OCD sort of things. Uh, it's just the way that my mind works. It logically makes sense for me to do things that way. Um, so this tile set, I thought that one of the strengths of it and something that I chose to steer into with this map was the mountains. I really, really loved the way that the mountains looked. So I decided that I was going to try to utilize them as much as possible. And as you can see, just looking through this, there's a ton of mountains. This map probably has the most mountains out of any <laughs> any world map that I've done for the channel. Uh, I just, I love the way they look and it's largely just because, and it's sort of the, the benefit of this entire tile set is it looks like something from like Final Fantasy one or two or three, somewhere in that region, maybe even the early dragon warriors. And so I, I kind of wanted to play with sort of my nostalgia and what I thought about when I was, uh, when I was playing those games, which when I was a little kid and I played those games, I often wound up spending the vast majority of my time in the earlier sections of those world maps, which are usually pretty green and pretty mountainous. So I kind of wanted to play with that idea a little bit and kind of go with that sort of idea. So if you notice, there's there's a lot of, uh, I've had a couple of spots where I've added in caves. Now this is, that's a tile that maybe not necessarily meant to go over a mountain, but sometimes you got to get creative and play with things. I also did it a little bit oop, up, let's see, up there, if I can get, there you go. That, um, to sort of make it seem like, okay, there's obviously there's caves, there's tunnels, there's things of that nature. And when I get down to the tunnels that are down here, when we get here in a second, I specifically place them close enough uh, so that the player would reasonably see one and the other pretty close to each other. Maybe not necessarily at the same time, but they would see them and then see the other one. And the idea of that is I wanted to, in their head, sort of prime them to think, oh, if I go into that cave, maybe I'll go come out this other cave. That's sort of 
that's a trick that you can do while you're making maps is even if something is inaccessible, show them something to get them thinking about that later so that when you show them sort of something that's connected to it a little bit later, they'll be able to to subconsciously connect the dots and sort of immediately know, okay, this is where I need to go to get to that. Um, it's just, it's, it's something, it's one of those things that you got to sort of keep in mind while you're designing your maps. Um, here I tried to play with different, a different biome other than the grass. And now here's the thing. I should have just done shift clicking. Um, shift mapping, for those of you who don't know, it's something that I have actually never te taught in any of my RPG Maker tutorials, and the reason being that I almost never use it to the degree that I basically forget that it exists. Basically, when you're working with auto tiles, you can shift click, and it allows you to paint with the auto tiles as if it's just a regular tile, um, which makes working with auto tiles a little bit easier. Personally, I kind of avoid auto tiles, to be honest with you, except for the basic like grass and maybe occasionally trees and stuff. But if you are somebody who enjoys using auto tiles, you should really get used to doing shift mapping because then it'll allow you to avoid situations like this where I'm like trying to make an island and I think it looks poopy. So I'm going to like overwrite it and just go back to wetlands. Feel free. Just do shift mapping. It works. I swear. And I honestly, I think it's funny that I'm talking about shift mapping in a video utilizing one of the Unpro Pro's tile sets because he is a huge fan of shift mapping. And every single time that I ever have a problem with mapping, sure enough, he comments, dude, you just shift map. And I'm always like, damn it, he's right. I don't want him to be right, but God damn it, he's right. Um... <laughs> It's just, I never think about it. I don't do it. So that's the final map. That is how the world looks with this retro tile set. And again, guys, I highly, highly recommend you go check out that tile set. You can get it in a numerous different places. I will have a link down in the description to where you should get it. Um, but I'm sure you can get it from a couple other places. I don't keep track of where William puts all of his stuff. But, uh... I do know one place that you can get it. So go get it. Enjoy it. And as I said, check out his Game Boy tile set uh, because it is awesome. I've been playing with it for quite a while now. I've actually I've actually had it for a few months, I think since May. Uh, I haven't really done anything with it. I kind of feel bad about that. But I will be coming out with something with that soon. In addition to more videos here on the channel, uh, I have a new tutorial series that is coming. I'm not going to tell you what it's for, but uh, you uh, might be caught off guard a little bit by what it is, but it's still going to be exciting. And I also have a few more other just like generic videos on the way. So be sure to keep an eye out for those.